When the army came to tell me that David had been killed by a Palestinian sniper, apparently one of the first things that I said is you may not kill anybody in the name of my child. This was the beginning of a pilgrimage. It took many years and many things happened to me and many tests to see if I'm honest. I started very soon to look for a way to prevent other families from experiencing this pain. This hole in the heart that can never be healed. But what to do? And eventually I went to a seminar where I met Palestinian mothers who had all lost children. And suddenly I realized we shared the same pain. And with that pain, we could be the most effective catalyst for change. And I thought, what shall I do with all of this? And suddenly my life changed completely. The priorities were different. I started to travel all over the world, spreading a message of reconciliation. I went into Israeli schools. I went into Palestinian schools. And things looked like maybe I could make a change in this world. Maybe, by example, people would understand. If I stood on the stage with a Palestinian, wouldn't people realize that we were the least likely people to do this? And how extraordinary it would be if they would take this as an example. And then came another knock on the door. And this was the army again. To tell me they caught the man who killed David. David, my beautiful David who was doing his master's in the philosophy of education at Tel Aviv University, who was part of the peace movement, who was the student leader as an example. David, my beautiful David, we don't see the people behind the gun. What would I do? What would I do now that I have the news that they came to tell me that they caught this man? How could I go around the world talking about peace, talking about reconciliation, if I wasn't willing to walk the walk. And so after many sleepless nights, and believe me, nothing is easy in this journey, after many sleepless nights, I decided to write a letter to the family of the sniper. And two Palestinians from our group took this letter to the family. And again, this bulldozer, Robbie Damlin, thought immediately I would get an answer. And then nothing happened, and I waited, and I waited. And some two and a half years later, I got a letter through Ma'an, which is the Palestinian news service. And the Palestinians in the group didn't want me to see the letter. And I said, please send it. I must know what this man said. And it was not exactly a letter from Martin Luther King. <laughs> but then I recognized I am no longer a victim. It doesn't matter what this man does. My life will not be contingent on what he decides to do. And suddenly I recognize that I'm free. And so I can go on and I can work. And I went to South Africa to look at what happened in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. How did people manage? How was it that perpetrators were released from the prison of their inhumanity? How was it that victims decided not to take revenge, to give up their just right to revenge? And then I came back to Israel, and you know, I have a big mouth, so I walked around telling everybody, yes, I want to meet the sniper, but everything's in the way. You know, he's in prison, how will I get into prison? Who will let me go in? They're never gonna let me in, and maybe he won't want to meet me. And maybe uh, I have to find a mediator. And you name it, I found every excuse possible not to meet. And suddenly, a couple of weeks ago, I realized, Robbie, wait a minute. The person who is in the way of this whole meeting is you. Because maybe you're frightened. It's OK to admit that you're frightened. This whole thing is filled with a path of judgment of seeing who you are. Am I honest? Do I mean it? Can I talk about reconciliation? Can I talk about love? Can I? Am I really, really that person that I perform with? And so I decided, OK, I'm going to try out the authorities. And I went off to the Ministry of Justice. And guess what? They want to help me. And I came to the conclusion 
that it doesn't really matter what happens in this meeting. What matters is that I am integrity, in integrity with the message that I bring. Thank you. Mm -hmm.